Hey, it's Lucas. Welcome back to the Chan Chan. This hot dog looks scrumptious if I do say so myself. One of you suggested I should watch The Kissing Booth 3. It's a new Netflix teen movie, just teen things. And I was like, well, I can't watch The Kissing Booth 3 for a video. I haven't even seen the first two, but I decided that's exactly what I'm gonna do. F the first two movies, I'm going in on Kissing Booth 3. I'm just watching part three and I'm gonna review just that with no context. I don't know what the Kissing Booth movies are about. I'm just gonna assume it's about a high school, there's a kissing booth, and people fall in love in it? Is it magical? Oh my god, if the kissing booth has magic powers, that'll be a great plot point. Whoever goes in the kissing booth falls in love because of the love magical powers of the kissing booth. I don't know how there's three movies just about a kissing booth. I don't know if they just keep coming back to this kissing booth. Are they trapped in the kissing booth? Is this a movie about a cult called The Kissing Booth, so it sounds cute? Cute, but really everyone's stuck in the kissing booth and they want out and it's the third movie and hopefully they escape Well after graduation Noah Lee Rachel and I decided to take one week and go on a road trip Okay, so we're five seconds into the movie. They just graduated I'm assuming high school and now they're going on a road trip. Hell yes. Is that a Sprouse twin? We'll find out soon. Wait, isn't Noah sent cereal in these movies? He's literally in everything. He's in all of us. Wow, go Noah. I was fully focused on making sure we all had as much fun as possible. Turns out that isn't a Sprouse twin. Okay. Good to know. But the mean boyfriend from Euphoria is in this. If I remember correctly, he was super rude in Euphoria. He had like a secret grinder account and his girlfriend was like, why are you on Grindr? And he like beat her? Did that happen? It was something dark. Anyway, there's not gonna be any of that in the kissing booth. I don't think at least. But for all we know right now, he might secretly go on Grinder in this movie too. We'll see. Let me run you through the highlights. We camped in the woods, saw the fish at the aquarium in Monterey, went to Fisherman's Wharf, ate clam trouter out of a bread bowl, watched our naughty video from Chemistry Lab, destroyed our naughty video from Chemistry Lab. Wait, they made a sex tape at school? Okay. Just teen things making an OnlyFans in the chemistry room. Someone allegedly did get impregnated in my high school's computer lab, so I mean, I guess these things do happen. The Kissing Booth 3 is a true depiction of life. Okay, is this one of their houses? Mansion on the beach in California? Okay, these kids are rich. They are loaded. I love movies about rich teens. Just because they're rich doesn't mean they don't have problems. Money can't buy everything, it can buy a lot. But sometimes you still get a broken heart. I was thinking, uh, when you get off the wait list for Harvard, maybe you and I could go off campus and get an apartment together. Like get our own? Place? Oh no. They're gonna live together during college. What? No. Stop. Already, this is a bad beginning. I mean, I didn't even go to college, but from what I'm aware of, it's all about doing drugs, doing every drug imaginable, and having intercourse with everyone. So obviously, you can't go to college with a bae. <laughs> They? We need to bring that back. People need to start saying they more. Don't worry, I'll start. I'll start the trend. She's making a bad decision is all I'm saying. She needs to dump Euphoria guy and his highlights. His highlighted hair needs to be dumped immediately. Oh, I wanted to show this to you. What is it? I have painstakingly coordinated my Berkeley schedule with your Rhode Island School of Design schedule. Aww. And I'm pretty damn sure I'm gonna be having my Rachel withdrawals. That could work. Of course it'll work. We'll make it work. I guess this is like the second couple. Like they aren't the main characters, but they're like the fun little storyline. And I guess they're gonna date in college too. Cool. I'm probably not gonna pay attention to these people throughout the movie because they're the second couple, you know? Like I just care about the main characters. Sorry, not sorry. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Um, we just have some news for you. We are planning to sell the beach house. What? 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 Doesn't make sense to hold on to it anymore. Now that your kids are gone off to college. You guys, I am confused. Like what? These are the parents, I guess, and they're selling the beach mansion. But I'm just confused because are they all siblings? Like that's not a thing, right? They're dating. They can't be siblings. How do they all have the same parents? Maybe the parents adopted them all. So like, yes, they grew up siblings, but they're still gonna date. That's still wrong. I guess this movie's about a pair of 
quadruplets who fall in love. What is going on, Netflix? You're canceled. Honestly, though, I am confused. I don't know how they all share the same parents, but whatever. Let's just keep watching. I had spent literally every summer of my childhood hanging out here with Lee and Noah. And the idea this would be our last summer here together was just hitting me. I was really gonna miss this old place in ways I hadn't even realized yet. The confusion deepens. <laughs> like, what? I guess they all spent their childhoods in this beach mansion, but they aren't related? I mean, maybe it's just four separate families shared the same beach house, but I don't know. All I know is they're selling the beach house, and I feel nothing about that. I don't give a shit, because I didn't watch the first two movies. I'm assuming a lot of memories were made at this beach house, and if you watched the first two movies, you'd be like, no, don't sell the beach house. That's where the cult of the kissing booth began. I'm I'm not attached to this beach house mansion. Honestly, get the money by selling it, sis. If they've had this house for these kids' whole life, can you imagine how much money they're gonna make? That investment paid off. Yay for holding on to investments long enough to make a huge profit. Let's sell the beach mansion. Sell it, make the money. Who cares if you made memories in the house? I never understand people who get attached to houses. I'm all about just like, sell it. Let's move somewhere new, cuter, bigger, more modern. Sell it, make the money, you know? It's our beach bucket list. What? Oh my God. A long time ago, Lee and I put together a list of all the crazy things we wanted to do together before going to college. Okay, they have some sort of bucket list from their childhood, which obviously means this movie is gonna be all about them accomplishing that bucket list before the mansion is sold. I'm on board, let's do this. Let's accomplish the bucket list. Why haven't they mentioned a kissing booth yet though? I'm 15 minutes in, no mention of a kissing booth. Are they still all trapped in a kissing booth and like this is a universe within the universe inside a kissing booth? Who's the leader of the kissing booth cult? I have so many questions. Also, where's Noah sent Penny? Where is he? Cause I thought he was gonna be in this. He's in this, right? Is Noah Centineo in the kissing booth? People are very confused about Noah Centineo not being in the kissing booth. Huh? So I'm not the only one who thought he was in it. Mandela effect? Like how Chick-fil-A used to have a K on the end of Chick and now it doesn't? Noah Centineo was in the kissing booth, but then like we switched dimensions so now he isn't. Whatever. I guess that's a thing we all have to live with now. Mandela effect in effect. What's going on? I got off the wait list. Harvard. What? Oh! <laughs> Cute, she got into Harvard, but the other guy is mad for some reason. He's just a jealous asshole, apparently. Like, why is he mad she got into Harvard? Sis, be proud for her. Stop. Can you please talk? What's there to talk about, you know? This is just the way things go, right? What do you mean? It's just the way the world works, you know? Friends leave, they grow apart. Bitch, she's going to Harvard. This is why you can't trust anything. This group of friends, they look all happy and wholesome. Oh, we went on a road trip. We're so happy and perfect. Nope, toxic. This is one toxic group of people, but they look like a picture-perfect friendship. No, they're all really toxic and bad. He doesn't want her to go to Harvard. This is as bad as when Lauren from the Hills was offered some job in Paris with Vogue or some shit, and she declined it to please her boyfriend in Malibu or whatever. Lauren from the Hills blew it. If she would have taken that trip to Paris, she would currently be Anna Wintour, but she stayed in Malibu with some dumb guy and ruined her whole life. And now this girl is too. She's gonna blow it. Girl, go to Harvard, screw everyone else. I just happen to be holding some list that says we could make this our best summer yet. You're saying that we do this whole list, our best summer we've ever had. The best summer ever. Yep, I was right. They're gonna do that little list and this is gonna be the best summer ever. The best summer ever. Best summer ever. The best summer. Ever. Best summer ever. Oh, hell no. They are not gonna sabotage the selling of the mansion and lose their parents millions of dollars in cash for an investment they've put like two decades into. Sis, I am not here for this. He better not F up the parents' bag. Like the parents are in their bag trying to collect the coins and the dumbass son, is he their kid? He's ruining it. If this movie is all about, let's save the mansion, I'm gonna be irate. I will not stand for this. That better not be the plot to this movie. 
Let's save the mansion. We had our childhood there. Who cares? Mom and dad want their millions so they can retire in Montecito. I'm mad. As promised, our bucket list. Now they're starting the bucket list. It's so fun and perfect. And I'm still confused how they're all connected, how they're related, how this is all working. I don't know why they all live in this one house with two parents, but look at them skydiving. Oh my God, pie eating contest. A blanket fort. This is epic. OMG, a wedgie. That was one of the bucket list items, giving someone a wedgie. Grow up, says me, watching a teen movie that wasn't made for me. Anyway. We're not gonna be able to do all of our bucket list items. Bucket list item number 22, live together at Berkeley. This one was gonna be tricky. Uh-oh, they can't complete the whole bucket list because they're going to different colleges. So sad. I don't feel bad for them at all. If they just let the goddamn parents sell the mansion, then they could all be even richer than they already are in private jet from college to college to visit each other every weekend. Also, I don't feel bad for them because this one summer they've had so far looks so effing fun. Like, first of all, they went on a road trip that was super iconic. They did everything. And that was just the first five minutes of the movie. I've never been on a road trip that fun and made that great of memories. They did more in that five minute road trip than I've done in my whole life. And now they're having so much fun doing the bucket list. Like, and I'm supposed to feel bad for them? I'm just jealous. I'll say it. I have FOMO. I'm nothing because I haven't lived a life as good as these fictional Netflix teens. Gosh, no wonder why everyone's depressed nowadays. It's because of the kissing booth. It makes us all feel inadequate. Sorry for the weirdness earlier. I hope things can be cool for us. And we'll probably run into each other around here. Of course it can. Maybe you should ask her first. No, it's okay. We're in a pretty good place right now. I think it'd you rushed out of the house so quickly this afternoon. I didn't I didn't get a chance to ask you. I'm sorry, I had like a million things going on. Oh shit, they're both gonna cheat on each other. Okay, this is finally getting good. I was waiting for some good old-fashioned cheating, and here we have it. Cheating is my favorite. Yes! Cheat on each other. They're now dressing up as Mario characters to play real-life Mario Kart at a go-karting place. This is so stupid, and I'm so jealous. Nobody's ever invited me to ever do something like this. That sounds fun. Like, they're just having so much fun. F you all. Why the guy that you kissed in front of the whole world Noah. is wearing the costume that Noah. you asked me to wear? Noah. Why is he wearing you it? You always just blow things way out of proportion. It's very clear that he's still after you, and if you don't he's get that- He's not, because there's nothing going on between Marco and me. If you think that he's not still after you, then you're being naive. It's embarrassing. Now there's drama, I guess, because she kissed this other guy in front of everyone in the past or something. So I'm just gonna assume this guy is from the kissing booth. I guess they kissed in the kissing booth. I'm confused. But then where does the euphoria guy come? In. If this is the kissing booth guy, where does grinder euphoria guy come in? I am lost. It's him that I don't trust. I mean, clearly still has feelings for her, so. Look, if you trust her, then you've got to believe what she says and nothing less. Okay, so the Euphoria guy is super mad at the main girl, but he's effing that other girl on the side, so I'm confused. He's a hypocrite, and he's probably gonna sneak on Grindr any second, just like he did in Euphoria. I'm done with him. Like, sis, you can't get mad at the main girl for cheating when you're also cheating. Like, you're both cheating. I'm adding final item to our list. The last DDM dance on our machine. July 5th, you'll be there, right? I was starting to feel overwhelmed. What, you don't want to do it? We literally have one month left to finish the entire bucket list and then we leave for school. Okay, there's drama over the bucket list now. Like, sis. Girl, it ain't that serious. I promise you it ain't that serious. It's a bucket list. Like, it's supposed to be fun. You've already done enough. If the bucket list is stressing you out, F the bucket list. It's supposed to be for fun. That'd be like going to a bowling alley and genuinely getting stressed from bowling. It's like, maybe just don't bowl then because it's supposed to be a fun activity and if it's actually giving you anxiety stop it's as simple as that take a breather it's gonna be okay the whole point of this movie is to be over the top i'm pretty sure because i mean he didn't put all those candles out by himself even just the reality of buying that many candles your cart would be full the money i mean i know they're rich but just the act of carrying the candles from the store to your car to your car to the house lighting each one individually like that would take a lot of time that this guy from Euphoria doesn't have. I mean, maybe I'm just mad because I've never played Mario Kart in real life and I've never decorated a beachside mansion with 2,000 candles.
mother. All right, now they're breaking in to dance in the middle of a restaurant because it's on the bucket list. I wonder if this happened in real life, if people would be okay with it. Like, would they be like, yes, dance? <laughs> or would they be like, you're ruining the ambiance of the restaurant. Turn this music off, sit down. This isn't about you right now. But nope, everyone's loving it. They're joining in. Oh my God, she's in the air. This is beautiful. He's going down the stairs. Oh, he just did a flip. Also, just so you know, they're singing Shut Up and Dance With Me, but I can't play that because it's copyrighted. Up, oh, everyone's cheering for them and their big dance. It always works out for them, doesn't it? Now even thinking back on the cute Mario Kart moment, like they were just throwing shit at each other. They littered and it never once showed them cleaning up. You know these bitches, like they were throwing shit. Ah ha ha! Mario Kart in real life. They left all that trash for the workers to pick up. They need to be canceled on Twitter immediately. They littered all over. I'm starting to think they're selfish. My jealousy towards them is turning into hatred. Fast. You know, you shouldn't be a sore loser. You know, I'd appreciate it if you washed your mouth. Yeah, I'm just trying to have a good time. What are you trying to do? All the boys are fighting! Look, this little innocent friend thing you got going on, nobody's buying it. It's very clear what you're here for. Really? You still want Elf? Hey, shut up. Guys, can you please stop? <laughs> I'm not doing this. The Euphoria guy refused to fight because he's such a good person. Now he's speeding off on a motorcycle. I'm gonna keep it 100. I was on my phone for a bit, so I don't exactly know why they were even in a fight to begin with, but yeah, they're mad. They're mad at each other and it's dramatic. I, I didn't know what to do. I don't care. You need to not be here right now. You just need to go. I know I've messed up a lot. It doesn't change how I feel about you. Give me a chance and stop I'll it, show you- Stop it, stop it, stop. I mean to go. Please. Yes, girl, yell at him. I don't know why she's mad, but keep screaming. I love how in movies people scream cry. I wanna do that in real life. Like I wanna be so mad at someone that I am screaming so much because I'm angry and that anger is triggering my emotional system so much that I start spontaneously crying. Like that would be chic. Comment below if you've ever done that. Now the main girl's crying and there's fireworks over the beautiful ocean. I guess she's in some sort of fight with her dad or something. Just just crying outside of the beachside mansion as fireworks go into the air. You know, rich people have problems too. Money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy nose jobs and chin implants, which enhance your happiness. Rule number three. Rule number three is a good one. Always help clean up your besties messes. Another thing that confuses me about this movie is every now and then like a rule will pop up on the screen and I don't know why. I'm just gonna assume that's something from the first two movies I missed. But yeah, like every now and then there's a rule. Like, oh, don't eat your food until you're hungry. Like stuff like that. I mean, it's actually not like that at all, but rules pop up every now and then. Cute. I know better than trying to stop you going to Boston. <laughs> but if you do decide to go, it's not gonna be with me. So that's it. The fact that we love each other means nothing. Yes, break up. I know this is hard, but it's necessary. You should always break up before college. She'll be okay. Break up. I'm so sorry. Somehow I'll make this up to you. That's what this entire summer was about, making it up to me. Well, forget it. I don't need it. You seriously cannot beat this subset. It is just a game, Lee. Now the annoying friend is mad again because she missed something for the bucket list. It's like, girl, get over the bucket list. Like, yes, it was fun and cute. You've done a lot already. Like, you don't have to do the whole list. It's gonna be okay. I'm on the main girl's side. Like, everyone is so annoying besides her. She actually has a job, unlike these other hoes in the movie. She just wants to go to a good college where everyone's like, no, don't. It's like, sis, let her live. She's clean the mansion and like she just wants to make everyone happy and everyone keeps saying it's not enough. She needs to ghost all these bitches. Cut them out of your life ASAP. This was supposed to be our best summer ever. It was never gonna be because all of those things that just made our summer so great before that's gone and we're never gonna get that back. Maybe that's the point. Maybe we're not supposed to. Oh, oh, and a new rule. All of our rules are done. Yeah, you storm off girl. F the kissing booth and the dumbass bucket list. Cut them all out. You know, I wish the movie would end here. I wish it would end with her cutting them all of her life and going to Harvard, but we still have a lot left. So she's probably gonna forgive them all. Ugh, why? Well, everything that's happened with Eleanor got me thinking about us. You know, I've watched them trying to keep up their long distance relationship and saw how hard it was. School is gonna be really tough and I 
just don't think that we should make it harder by trying to make a relationship work from so far. So you're breaking up with me? Now the second storyline couple is breaking up. Fast forward, who cares? The main girl is going through every room of the beachside mansion before it gets torn down or something. And she keeps like seeing her childhood memories in each room. And I'm not even kidding. Like I could have cried when I was watching this. I was so close to crying, but no actual tears formed, which I was sad about because I wanted to cry and like take some Insta stories and make people worried about me. And when people asked about it, I'd be like, don't, I don't want to talk about it. Like I would just post myself crying mysteriously and like worry everyone. I wanted to do that, but I didn't fully cry. But this was a very touching moment. Even though I'm still confused how they all know each other, how they all lived in this mansion, it was very cute. You didn't think I'd let you get away without saying goodbye, did you? Well, I guess this is it. It feels so weird to be leaving without you. Room number 35. Always call your bestie every time you miss them. This is the emotional part of the movie because I almost cried again. Because like they were talking about being besties and then like he drove off to college and it was showing them in their younger selves saying bye to each other. Like it was honestly so cute. Like I know I started out being like F them all, F the mansion, sell the beachside house. But like in this part of the movie, I was like so cute. I even took some photos of me like kind of crying. But like, as you can see, the tears were in my eyes eyeball, they didn't roll down the face, which was really sad. Like they just sort of stayed in there. And I was like, bitch, go down so I can take a photo. They didn't though. So Mrs. Flynn, I believe you'll find the paperwork for the sale of the properties in order. We only need this last signature to finalize the deal. Is there a problem? I'm just not selling this house. You'd be walking away from millions. All of these old homes are being taken down. Okay, F all the emotions. Girl, sell the house. She's walking away from millions of dollars. Ugh, this is so annoying. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. But whatever, it's probably fine because they're probably already rich. They'll keep the house full of memories or whatever, but it's such a waste. You know, you could have made so much money, girl. What if the market is at a peak right now that it won't hit again for years? There could be a crash and this could be where you're gonna sell the highest amount for the next 10 years. Has she thought about that though? I'm for this investment property. Like I know this isn't my life and it's not even real life, but whatever, they can do whatever they want with their money. So annoying. We're at the end of the movie. It's been years. She's cut her hair and now there's a kissing booth, which is the whole point of the movie, right? I still don't get it, but there's a kissing booth and they are acknowledging it at the end of the movie. <gasps> Wait, the euphoria guy's here. They're talking, smiling. He's now dramatically walking up a staircase. They're smiling at each other again. Now they're driving motorcycles down the coast together. I'm down for them ending up together. Cause like they gotta live their college years separately, grow independently. Like I'm down for her with her new haircut. She can get with the euphoria guy again. You guys, I'm not even gonna lie. This movie was so cute. It was cheesy and over the top and perfect. Everything I want in a movie, you know? I grew attached to the main girl throughout the course of the movie. I just want her to be happy. Sell the beachside mansion though. Well, there's that. That's my review of The Kissing Booth 3 without watching the first two. It did everything you'd expect from a teen Netflix movie. I'm excited for Addison Rae's teen Netflix movie. If you want me to review that one, comment below or thumbs up this video. It's coming out soon. Thank you for coming along on this journey. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another video like this. And with that, I'm gonna go. Bye. See you in The Kissing Booth 4. This kid they shouldn't make a fourth. It ended perfectly. We don't need to see them now. Stop.